I'm Nigel Lockett, I'm Professor of Entrepreneurship here at the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship and I'm really pleased to welcome Sophie from Lancaster University who's been here doing a research seminar in her research in women refugees. So Sophie, would you like to just introduce yourself and say a little bit about um, what you do? Yes, thank you. I'm Sophie al Khalid and I'm a lecturer in Gender and Entrepreneurship at Lancaster University Management School, Department of Entrepreneurship and Strategy. And uh, my research is focused on women's entrepreneurship, particularly in developing countries. And um, at the moment I'm looking at Syrian women refugees and how they engage in entrepreneurship as a means of survival. And you've just finished a really interesting yeah. seminar. Yeah. Um, could you tell just a little bit about what, what the seminar was about and what you were sharing from your research? So the, it's a paper that I'm working on with my co-author, um, Dr. Inam Sasaki, and we're working together on trying to... Um, well, initially we were looking at how the women were engaging in craft work as a means of selling it to... Um, make a profit, survive, put food on the table. Um, but once we really delved into their stories and um, looked really in depth at the craft and why they were creating it and what it resembled to them and what it meant to them and what it reminded them of, um, how it had a meaning of something to do with their past, mm. how it was helping them cope in a difficult present, and how it was giving them opportunities in the future, we realized that there was far more beyond uh, economic empowerment for these women through these, these pieces of craft work. And, and you also explained to us how uh, they, they uh, uh, were in a particular state, so not a geographical state, but yeah. a sort of an emotional and political state. What was the term you used to describe that? Well, we're saying that the women, um, well, uh, ge geographically, we were looking um, at the women in, uh, in the Zaatari refugee camp on the S Jordanian Syrian border. We were looking at women in Jordan the, itself mm -hmm. and looking at women in the UK who are engaging in this craft work. And what we describe is we say that they are stuck in a liminal space. Um, and it's not just, you know, it's a limbo. But then we sort of found that the women are not, they don't really have a, an end point, uh, which is a usually a liminal space, has a beginning and end. It's a space in between two sort of phases in your life. Um, so they were stuck in this perpetual liminal liminality um, because they don't know how long they can remain in the UK. They don't know how long they're going to be living in the camps. They don't know whether they have to leave Jordan yeah. if it's decided that, that they should go back. Uh, so they're dealing with this perpetual liminality which um, is constantly going on in the back of their minds as they're trying to work, earn and put food on the table for their children and pay rent, etc. Yeah, and, and I was also struck by how hard it was for you to get the data. It yeah. wasn't easy to get the data. So no. you, you worked really hard and you got the data. So actually what you're saying is actually more meaningful than, than many other studies we see. So I just wondered if, if, if I were a policymaker and my job was to work and support women in this uh, position, what do you think I could get from your paper that would help me? Um, well, I think first of all, I'm, I'm part Syrian myself. I'm ha half Syrian myself. Mm. My father's Syrian. And um, so I think hopefully something that would make this um, a helpful study for sort of Western policymakers mm -hmm. and in agencies is to understand that this has been done by somebody who was immersed in the culture, who grew up in the Arabic culture, who's a half Arab woman herself. And um, I've actually been on the ground with these women, engaged with them, talked to them. And what I found is that um, they really need not just uh, sort of handouts and, and financial support. Some of them get on an ad hoc basis 40 to 80 pounds a month or Jordanian dinars, for example, in Jordan. You know, they, they don't want that. They want uh, infrastructure. They want support to help them get the products, to help them develop the products, uh, market them and sell them, to have places where they can actually go and sell them uh, with support from the community. Sophie, thank you very much. Thank you.